With the mind of a prize fighter and the heart of a champion, the 2007 Virginia football team carried a boxer's mentality into every practice and every game. The Cavaliers were more than willing to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with each of their opponents, trading blow after blow in search of a knockout punch. While the Cavaliers lost round one of their season-long bout in the opener at Wyoming, their toughness and resiliency emerged over the next two months with a string of seven consecutive victories. In their home opener against the Duke Blue Devils, Virginia struck quickly after Vic Hall raised 67 yards to set up the Cavaliers' first touchdown. A seven-yard toss from Jameel Sewell to Tom Sandy less than four minutes into the game. On the third play in the Cavaliers' next possession, Cedric Pierman electrified the crowd with a 58-yard dash to make it a 14-0 game less than halfway through the first quarter. Duke's 11 unanswered points tightened the contest, but Virginia responded as it would so many times in 2007 with a methodical game-clinching drive. Behind true freshman quarterback Peter Lollick, the Cavaliers marched 82 yards in six and a half minutes in the fourth quarter to seal a 24-13 victory. The following week, the Cavaliers took on the North Carolina Tar Heels in Chapel Hill. Head coach Al Groh had instilled in his men a belief that home for Virginia was that space of land between the white lines. The Cavaliers staked their claim to the UNC gridiron by thundering out to a 16 to nothing lead. Chris Cole's career-high five field goals tied the UVA single-game record and included a 51-yarder and a 48-yarder. Cedric Pierman turned in another brilliant performance, amassing 223 yards of total offense, with 186 of those coming on the ground. With Virginia's offensive line opening holes for both Cedric and Andrew Pierman, and with the defensive line swatting passes and holding North Carolina to 60 yards rushing, this was a game that would be decided in the trenches. On the ninth play of a fourth-quarter Carolina drive, Chris Long produced one of his many spectacular game-changing plays. Foster in motion, blitz, they throw, ball. Chris Long got it. Intercepted by Chris Long. Long at the 40, at the 35, and Long ends up with a football. The Cavs will have it. But the play of the game rested in the massive hands of nose tackle Nate Collins, when the Tire Heels had a chance to tie the game with less than two minutes to play. So Yates now with a two-point conversion from the three. Looking to go to the middle, throws. The ball's at it down! Virginia knocks it down at the line of scrimmage. Back home at Scott Stadium for their third consecutive ACC matchup, the Cavaliers answered a quick Georgia Tech touchdown with three straight scores to take a 21-7 lead in the first quarter. Defensive end Jeffrey Fitzgerald once again demonstrated his uncanny knack for finding the football when he gathered in a deflected pass and rambled home from the 25-yard line. Bennett to throw, ball batted in the air again. The ball still in the air. The Cavs end up with it. Fitzgerald, 10-5, touchdown. Oh, my goodness. The ball batted twice in the air. Led by ACC Defensive Player of the Year, Chris Long, the Virginia defense was a nightmare for opponents throughout the season. Long's 14 sacks and 19 tackles for a loss placed him among the nation's best and led a unit that recorded a total of 40 sacks and 71 tackles for a loss, resulting in 576 negative yards for the opposition. And time after time, Attempted passes never even crossed the line of scrimmage. 
Offensively, Cedric Pierman emerged as the ACC's leading back early in the year. His 138 yards rushing against Georgia Tech marked his third consecutive game with more than 135 yards gained on the ground. Pierman looked every bit the successor in a long line of Virginia runners who graduated to the NFL. As he crashed through the Tech defense like a wrecking ball through a condemned building. But for all the Cavaliers' heroics on both sides of the ball, Georgia Tech chipped away at the lead until they had the advantage at 23-21. Virginia had taken Tech's best shot, then seized an opportunity with nine minutes remaining in the game. Aaron Clark's devastating hit cleared the way for Trey Womack's fumble recovery and gave the Cavaliers the ball at the Yellow Jackets' 26-yard line. Camille Sewell wasted no time in delivering a perfect ball to Staten Job for the game winner. The following week against Pittsburgh, the Cavaliers again jumped out to an early lead. As Sewell was sharp from the opening snap, Connecting with senior tight ends Jonathan Stupar and Tom Sandy for touchdowns on consecutive series. Play fake, Sewell wants to throw. Sewell locks in, throws, far side, going up to get it, Santi! Next, it was fullback Rashawn Jackson finding pay dirt on a five-yard toss. After a Cedric Pierman one-yard plunge and a Chris Gold field goal, the Cavaliers led 30 to nothing midway through the second quarter. For all practical purposes, Virginia had locked up this game before halftime. Thanks again to a stifling defense, an efficient offense, and some big plays from the kicking teams. Fifth-year Gordy Samus filled in admirably on the offensive line for the injured Eugene Monroe. And among the many standouts was freshman Razai Dowling. When he forced a fumble on Virginia's second kickoff of the day, it was already apparent the Sporting News ACC all-freshman cornerback was bringing something extra special to the Cavaliers' special teams. In shellacking the Pitt Panthers 44-14, Virginia demonstrated not only a steady improvement in every phase of the game, but an explosiveness shared by every unit on the squad. It was in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, that Virginia's next man up philosophy became most evident. And their collective refusal to crack under pressure was now as obvious as the bee saber on their helmets. Middle Tennessee struck first, but the Cavs tied the game at seven with a big time grab by Big Country, number 85, John Phillips. With Cedric Pierman's magical season coming to an abrupt end before halftime, Cavalier fans wondered if this trip to Tennessee would be a disaster. What they witnessed was a team that refused to yield to the upset-minded Blue Raiders. Keith Payne and Andrew Pierman carried the load in the backfield with Payne grinding out 70 yards on 17 carries and Pierman scoring a pair of second-half touchdowns. 10, 10, 5, dives, he gets in! Touchdown, Pierman! Starting on their own 20, trailing 21 to 20 with only a minute 26 remaining, the Cavaliers advance quickly into Middle Tennessee territory with a pair of completions to Pierman and Santi. Two plays later, Josh Seidenberg made his first reception of the year a big one as the Cavs moved to the 29. Well, more on a pass to Stupar gave Chris Gold and Virginia a shot at a game winner from the 34-yard line. Down, the kick is up. It is long enough. It is good! <laughs> at 5-0, the University of Connecticut Huskies arrived at Scott Stadium on October 13th as one of only a handful full of still undefeated teams in the country. What they faced in Charlottesville was a relentless Cavalier defense that refused to yield for 60 minutes. UConn had vaulted into the nation's top 25 on their ability to force and capitalize on opponents' turnovers. 
UConn was twice given great field position, but behind leading tackler John Copper and fellow linebacker Antonio Appleby, Virginia stopped the Huskies and limited the damage to a pair of field goals. For the game, Virginia held UConn to an average of less than two and a half yards per carry. Safeties Byron Glasby and Nate Lyles combined for 15 tackles, and linebacker Clint Sidham seemed to be everywhere, forcing fumbles, sacking the quarterback, and disrupting the Connecticut offense at every opportunity. For all the attention focused each week on All-American defensive end Chris Long, Virginia was anything but a one-man show. With a roster full of playmakers, each ready to be the next man up, every Saturday produced an array of players eager to make a game-changing play. Ten different Cavaliers had at least one pass reception against UConn, and it was a converted defensive back who had one of the biggest. After the multi-talented Hall connected with Gorham, Virginia took the lead on a Sewell to Phillips eight yarder. He caught it at the one and waltzed in. Nobody around John Phillips. Similar to Zeidenberg the week before, Gorham emerged from the depth chart at a critical time with three receptions for 76 yards. His final catch of the day, a 30-yarder in the fourth quarter, helped set up another Chris Gold game winner as the Cavs secured a 17-16 victory. The Cavaliers were on a roll when they traveled to College Park to take on one of their fiercest rivals, the Maryland Terrapins. The Terps were determined to end Virginia's six-game winning streak and marched out to a 14-3 lead early in the second quarter. While Maryland was impressive in the early rounds of this heavyweight matchup, Virginia remained unfazed and quickly released a torrent of energy in the form of running back Michael Simpson. Simpson was nothing short of spectacular, as he proved that just having an opportunity isn't enough. It's being prepared to excel when an opportunity presents itself. Simpson's 271 combined rushing and receiving yards totaled 36 more than Maryland's entire offense, and his lightning-quick bursts were a perfect complement to the thunderous pounding of Keith Payne. After Maryland's early scores, the Cavaliers tightened their defense behind their unstoppable captain, Chris Long. Long was a man on a mission, and with three and a half tackles for loss, two sacks, 10 total tackles, and two passes batted down at the line of scrimmage, his play at Maryland will long be remembered as one of the greatest individual defensive performances in Virginia history. Long safety cut Maryland's lead to 17 to 12 at the end of the third quarter and set the stage for another dramatic finish. With 7.42 remaining, still trailing by five, the Cavaliers were backed up to their own 10-yard line. What followed was an amazing, gut-wrenching drive that included 18 plays and ended with just 16 seconds on the clock. Jameel Sewell was again razor sharp at crunch time, and his new favorite target was as reliable as a seasoned veteran. With 49 seconds remaining, Virginia faced a fourth and four at the Maryland 14. Mike in the backfield, Sewell to throw. Sewell looking, the catch, Mike heads to the far side. Did he get it? Very, very On close. On first and goal at the 10, Sewell dished to Simpson yet again. The shovel pass, 10-yard line, five to the goal line, to the one. The one-yard line by Mike Hill and the little shovel pass. Virginia had reached the Maryland one-yard line and there was little doubt who would be getting the football. Sewell puts a man in motion, the power package. They're going to give it to Mike Cal. He jumps. Touchdown. Touchdown, Virginia. Controlling the final seven and a half minutes in a hostile environment required the collective will of every offensive player. And remarkably, the Cavaliers' newest man up, 
Michael Simpson gained all but two of Virginia's yards in their 90-yard drive. That Virginia's record was 7-2 entering the Wake Forest game despite trailing in the fourth quarter in six of those games was a testament to the Cavaliers' refusal to crack and their ability to play their best with their backs against the wall. Led by first-team All-ACC guard Brandon Albert and his line mates, honorable mention All-ACC Eugene Monroe, Ian Yates Cunningham, Jordy Lipsy, and Will Barker, Virginia's offensive line was outstanding throughout the season. After suffering their first defeat in nearly two months in Raleigh, the Cavaliers hosted the defending ACC champions Wake Forest on November 3rd. Josh Seidenberg's 55-yard return on Virginia's first possession helped set up the first score a 44-yard Chris Gold field goal. A pair of Wake Forest field goals had the Deacons in front 6-3 when Virginia got the ball at their own 44 with just a minute 11 remaining in the first half. Sewell in the pocket, throws, man wide open, a catch, 25-20. Covington broke the tackle, 10-5, touchdown! Down 16 to 10 with 615 remaining was a familiar scenario for Sewell and the Cavaliers. And as he had done on so many occasions, the Richmond, Virginia native responded with another clutch performance. Side, they're gonna give it to Michael. No, Sewell's gonna keep it. Sewell's still on his feet. 10-5 to the four-yard line. With the ball on the Wake Forest one, Ian Yates cleared a path for Michael and Virginia was poised for yet another come-from-behind victory. Much like the Maryland game, Virginia fans had to wait for the final seconds to tick off to celebrate their triumph. When Wake's 47-yard field goal attempt was wide, Virginia had their eighth victory of the year and an NCAA record five wins by two points or less. In a season full of nail-biting finishes, what happened the following weekend against the Miami Hurricanes was inconceivable in the minds of many college football fans. Miami was celebrating their last game ever to be played in the venerable Orange Bowl. Virginia's players would later describe the explosion of energy they felt when they approached the Orange Bowl on the bus before the game, and their emotional fever pitch never subsided as they completely dominated every phase of the game. Virginia's first possession looked like a replay of their best plays against Maryland and Wake Forest, with Michael Simpson racing 28 yards into Miami territory, and Maurice Covington flying through the Miami secondary for a 29-yard touchdown. The throw, had a man wide open, ca catch Covington at the 25-20, 15-10-5, touchdown. Covington, the touchdown. Two series later was fourth and five for the home team when Zeidenberg bolted through the Miami line and hurtled himself at the Miami punter. Zeidenberg's third career blocked punt gave his team first and goal on the five yard line and Keith Payne wasted no time finding the end zone. Three plays into the second quarter, Byron Glaspie was in the right spot at the right time and with a 29-yard return, set up another three points for Virginia. Accepted again, the ball kicked up, Cavs 40, 35, 30, Glass With the defense 25. swarming all over Miami, the Cavaliers got the ball back just two minutes later in great field position. And Jameel Sewell went to work with one of his many reliable receivers. Jameel sneaks, touchdown! Ahead 31 to nothing at the half, the Cavaliers had taken the wind completely out of the Hurricanes. The defense blunted every drive with a stifling assault at the line or an athletic play in the secondary. The Cavs had long since proven they could win on the road, and when they opened the third quarter with a 10-play scoring drive, they put to rest any notion of their ability to score anywhere at any time.
Misdirection, they give it to Michael. Waltz is in, untouched, touchdown Virginia. Nobody touched him. For the game, Jamil Sewell was a model of efficiency, completing 20 of 25 passes for 288 yards. Virginia's suffocating defense allowed only nine first downs and only 189 yards of total offense. As college football prepared to close the record books on the Orange Bowl, Virginia's total domination from start to finish produced a 48 to nothing blowout, one of the most lopsided victories in Orange Bowl history. That Virginia could execute a near flawless performance in such an emotionally charged game spoke volumes to the focus and maturity of Al Groh's team. Still with one battle to be fought, the Cavaliers set their sights on Texas Tech for a New Year's Day bowl game at Gator Bowl in Jacksonville on January 1st, 2008. Carroll will run a screen to the outside and Britton the catch 40 to the 41 42 yard line of Virginia covers it well and he might have dropped the football to the Cavs have it Virginia might have gotten it right back the officials, the officials are, are acting like that's not the case
Those players leave with us having the greatest of affection and the greatest of respect for what they put in it to make this team what it was. It's just uh, tugs at your heart for some of them not, not to get what they so dearly wanted here today and for it to have happened the way that it did. What hurts the most is uh, looking around and seeing how disappointed my teammates are. Um, you know, I have no regrets, you know, uh, as, as a player. Uh, I've worked really hard and um, just tried to be the best teammate I could today and, and throughout my career. And I think I speak for the entire senior class when I say, you know, we're not going to hang our heads. You know, we're down right now. It does feel like somebody kicked us in the stomach, but, but uh, you know, we're just proud to be a part of this team. The 2007 season will long be remembered as one of the most exciting in Virginia football history. It was a season marked by breathtakingly close victories and the weekly emergence of new heroes willing to seize their opportunity and rise from obscurity to a starring role. Veterans like Alan Billick, Jermaine Dias, and second team All-ACC tight end Tom Santee fought back from injuries to contribute in every conceivable way. Throughout the year, punter Ryan Wigand helped Virginia win the battle for field position and earned second team All-ACC honors. And Chris Long produced more spectacular plays in one season than most players produce in a career. As a finalist for the Ronnie Lott, Bronco Nagurski, Ted Hendricks, and Bill Dudley Awards, and as Virginia's first ever Lombardi Award finalist, the first team All-American inspired his teammates throughout the season. ACC Coach of the Year Al Groh had trained his fighting Cavaliers to be able to take a punch, and Virginia proved it could deliver plenty of blows of their own. The journey for this year's Virginia team was an inspiring one, full of brilliant moments and great rewards. This was a season that will be permanently inscribed in the minds of Virginia fans everywhere.